All right. Welcome back to Get Real. I'm your host, Erin Thomason. I am joined today by Sarah Bear. Thank you, Sarah. And Lee Joseph. Hi, Lee. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, We're happy to have you here. Lee is with Coldwell Banker in Worcester. And Lee has 35 years of real estate experience. So um, just doing a little math, she was like probably five years old when she started. Five five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah, maybe five and a half. Yeah, we'll have to pull out the birth certificate and check. But um, we're kind of looking, you know, at a a Jackie Kennedy right now. So um, very elegant. Um, So... Lee, you primarily work in the Central Mass area. You said you were you live in Shrewsbury, but you're from Worcester, so you just kind of stick right around here? Yes. So although my license is good in all of Massachusetts, the Cape and the Islands, I've pretty much focused my career on Worcester County. Mm-hmm. Uh, I grew up in Worcester. Mm-hmm. My husband, myself, and my daughters live in Shrewsbury, mm-hmm. so I do a lot east of Worcester. Okay. Um, and I also do a lot in the, in the Wachusett District. Right. Holden, okay. Paxton, Pr- Princeton, Sterling, and Rutland. Yeah. So I think, I mean, the market everywhere has been crazy, but um, I really feel like the, the Worcester and surrounding area has been m- really crazy the past couple of years. Are you seeing any change in that, or are we still going strong? Absolutely going strong. Yeah. All of the right um, components and factors are there. So Mm -hmm. Worcester has always been a good market, not a great market. Yeah. But now that we have, you know, transportation, we have the trains, Mm -hmm. a good schedule of trains. Mm -hmm. We have the Worcester Red Sox, you know, coming to Worcester. That's been a real shot in the arm for Mm -hmm. housing. Mm -hmm. Um, The cultural aspects. I mean, we've always had Mechanics Hall, Tuckerman Hall, yeah. but the Hanover Theater mm. has brought so many people mm-hmm. into the city, into the theater, mm-hmm. you know, looking at, looking at Worcester as a central city again, like Boston right. and Springfield. Right. Um, so all, I feel like all the right components are there. The airport is expanded. The mm-hmm. highway is expanded. We've just, we have a lot going for the Worcester market. Low inventory. That's what's right. driving the boat right now. So houses come on the market. There's lots of buyers interested in each property, mm-hmm. and the property sells. And the the pricing has been um, on an uphill climb now. Going mm-hmm. on this this would be the third season. Yeah, Lee, what do you think about the pricing? You know, do you think it's going to plateau, or do you think that it's going to keep increasing year after year? Well, this is my thirty fifth year in real estate, and what I will say is that um, real estate is a cycle. Yes. And I've seen many cycles up and down. I feel that um, we're still on an uphill climb in an election year with rates being, you know, very low and inventory low. So I don't think we've plateaued and hit the top and on our way down, but it is a cycle. So that will eventually happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Would you say that there's some difficulty? I know there's, you know, a shortage of inventory all over, but I'm thinking in particular about the Worcester multifamily market. Um, are you seeing that it's really tough to, to kind of get in there uh, at this point? There's been a resurgence of the multifamily market. Yeah. And I say that because back in the late 80s, early 90s, mm-hmm. my company, which was Better Homes and Gardens at the time, mm-hmm. actually closed our investment division because more of the three families were going to foreclosure than were selling. Wow. Oh. Now those same multis that we couldn't sell for under 100000 <laughs> yeah. are going for 100000 plus per floor. Yeah. Yes. Right. I would say even more. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, looking in the Worcester market, even, you know, think about what was it maybe about 10 years ago when we had kind of that big condo conversion of these three units. Mm-hmm. Right. Now it's, you know, people are looking to invest. And, you know, I have people that are willing to spend, you know, half a million dollars right. to Having get a trouble. multifamily yeah. in Worcester that don't have the, they can't find a home. They can't find right. the inventory. And I think, again, not to talk about the Worcester Red Sox so much, but (laughs) parts of the city, you know, like that the ball field is going to be, you'll go Kelly Square to, you know, to access the ball field. So that that Blackstone area is Mm -hmm. already was up and coming with restaurants Mm -hmm. and everything else. The the, um, Railers Hockey Rink is there. Mm -hmm. Now you add that and that part of the city, which maybe wasn't as vibrant as other parts of the city is now on fire. Yeah. Well, and also they're going to be reworking Kelly square. Right. So it's not going to be a death trap. Hopefully. Yeah. Right. Hopefully so much of a nightmare, which I think encourages people to come in too, because when, you know, if I'm driving, 
I'm not going there. Well, my you grandmother, <laughs> that's my grandmother used to say, just close your eyes and go right, right. through Kelly Square. That's <laughs> what you got to do. Square. Yeah, Lincoln Square too. And yeah. that's yeah. all been, you know, redone as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A so, lot, a lot is happening. Yeah. We're there. seeing a lot of vibrancy in Worcester. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you must be excited. I mean, that's your hometown to see such a, you know, change in the market and in, in the housing inventory there. I see changes on so many levels. I don't do renting. I'm not a rental agent. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I, when I walk downtown and see the number of people walking their dogs, knowing that they're living yeah. downtown, yeah. Yep. when I see the white coats from the Mass College of Pharmacy, I'm yeah. loving that downtown yeah. is vibrant again. Because mm-hmm. when I was a little girl, my grandmother would take us shopping on yeah. Wednesday nights because Main Street stayed open. Yeah. And, you know, all the department stores, Charles K., Marcus's, Den Homes, Barnett's, mm-hmm. they were all mm-hmm. open on Wednesday night. Yeah. And then downtown became a ghost town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you can skate on the oval behind Worcester City Hall, mm-hmm. which, I mean, I just can't say enough about where I feel the city has gone in the last, yeah. you know, five years or so. Right. It's really been recent. Yes, mm-hmm. it I has. Mean, yeah, I think the past. Um, so... You know, you're in the Worcester market, but you're also in, I mean, you're in the Shrewsbury area. Yes. Um, you said you kind of go out Holden, Princeton, Paxton. Correct. Um, and that's and that's it. And then you have uh, fine friends that you refer to <laughs> outside of that. Yes. Um, yeah. As far as, you know, you're, so it's a pretty big testament, like where you actually go, right, to these towns. and But your, your referrals and the people that you are working with really comes from your heart. It, you're not you're not marketing yourself. You're not you know buying leads on Zillow or anything like that. The referrals that you're getting are coming from either people you've known your whole life or referrals from past clients. Is that correct? That is correct. I don't buy leads on Zillow or anything like Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> most of the um, most of the business I do, whether it be buyer or sellers, are people that have been either previous clients. After 35 mm-hmm. years, you develop a. a good base of previous clients Mm -hmm. or they're people that those people have referred to me. Mm -hmm. I choose to be proficient in those areas that I talked about. Mm -hmm. Although again, my license is good all over Massachusetts, Mm -hmm. but I've also put together a good network of brokers, Mm -hmm. some of which work for my company, some of which don't, who I just feel do a really good job in their areas of expertise. Mm -hmm. So we have a really good networking event, um, a networking, um, Group. Yeah, group. group, right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if I can't service someone that needs to be serviced, I have I can be a resource for them and point them in the right di- direction mm-hmm. for someone I know that can help them. Sure. Which I think is rare. I mean, as you know, maybe it's a stereotype, but realtors are pretty aggressive with each other and try to beat each other. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, but here you are saying that you've created and you're part of this amazing group of referral partners that are... are some of them are inside Colwell, but some are not. It's the reason I'm here today. Actually, one of the people that I work very closely with is Jen Spencer. Mm-hmm. And she handles the Groton Dunstable area mm-hmm. and gave you my name mm-hmm. as someone to, she to did. speak yep. with. She's mm-hmm. terrific. Yeah. And I think that is just incredible. I mean, you know, from any industry, from a business perspective, from a personal perspective, I admire that. I think it's really cool. Um, well, I feel like you can't in business in the same business for 35 years and not um come to value strong relationships and deliver upon that i mean you your reputation is um impeccable as far as i can tell so um you were you were talking about the reviews and you said you have only fives um right and those are things that we can mess with (laughs) right so that speaks that speaks volumes i think too i appreciate that thank you i I really believe that your reputation is everything. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what line of business you're in or even just your personal life. Who you are, what you are, how you put yourself out in the public is just something I hold to a very high standard. Mm -hmm. So what I had mentioned to you was that Zillow solicits reviews, Realtor.com solicits reviews, Mm -hmm. and people post things. Mm -hmm. And you cannot control what they post and you cannot take them down. Mm -hmm. And I do go and I read because I want to see what's being you, said yeah, about sure, me. I care. very much appreciate, first of all, that people take the time to make a review, yeah. a testimonial for yes. you. And I, I'm proud to say that the common thread that I see is customer service, mm-hmm. which is what I strive for. I, whether you're a buyer, a seller, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to be of service 
to you when people recognize that. You know, you're available to answer your questions. You're a resource to them. That's what they're hiring you to do. Right. Right? Anybody can find a house, you know, online, on, you know, anyway. Yeah. It's, it's the rest of the process that they're looking for guidance on. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and, you know, you mentioned being available and being a resource, but you also talked about how you manage um, your time with all of your clients. And I think, you know, setting expectations by saying, I don't have my phone with me on this listing appointment because I want to give you my full attention. Right. You know, on the flip side of that, um, if you call me and I'm in another listing appointment, then I'll get back to you right after. Um, but it shows respect, you know, for, for your client's time when you're with them. So, and I think that just having someone understand how that works can help them see how you can be so successful and, um, serving so many people, but also giving them the, the right attention. I also find that you have to have a balance in your life. If you're Mm -hmm. working twenty four seven and not finding a balance, I find that people burn out. Oh yeah. A lot of new agents will come to me and say, you know, how did you get to do this volume? And I'm I'm very quick to say over time it didn't happen, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. in one year. And that I try to really have a good balance. I mean I I like my husband. We get a lot of great. <laughs> Congratulations. I love so to glad spend to hear that. Yeah. I love my daughter. So I have a daughter getting married this year. I mean, it's just the, been the best process, like going through mm-hmm. the wedding planning with her. Mm-hmm. I have a great group of friends that I like to see. I mean, I don't just work 24-7, yeah. but I work hard. Yep. So yeah. when I'm working, I'm working hard, but I also try to spend time with family and friends and mm-hmm. all of that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, you mentioned that, uh, you know, over this period of time, there's a couple of interesting stories that you've accumulated. Would you like to share something with us? <laughs> sure. Um, so I, I feel like in 35 years, you kind of think you've seen everything, and yeah. you've heard everything. <laughs> and, and then something else happens. Oh my gosh. And it always <laughs> happens when it's someone that, um, I mean, all of my clients are special and important to me, but it's always someone who, you know. Like, you'd never want something bad to yes, happen to. Yes, yeah. yeah. So one of my daughters played basketball, and her coach and husband asked me to sell their house and sell them another, and I did. Mm-hmm. And they had vacated the first property mm-hmm. a couple of weeks early, and I wanted to just make sure everything was okay there, so I would stop by periodically just to make sure everything was still as it was when they left it. Mm-hmm. And one day I showed up, and the buyers had literally broken into the property were in the pool, had, oh had the gosh. fire pit going, had the, they were barbecuing, they had other friends there. Wow. I, I was just like, I could not yeah. believe that someone would <laughs> go to that Right. Level. Yeah. Right. So t- to me, that was just like, it, it certainly gave me pause. And I, just, yeah. well, I was speechless. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know what yeah. to say, you know? Yeah. Well, what did they say? Well, they were, and they were really nice. They were like, hey, do you want a burger? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, medium rare. Hey, yeah. Why are you guys in the pool? You yeah. know, like <laughs> craziness. That's funny. That's funny. Mm. Um, so uh, what are some of the other things that you're involved in? You mentioned that you are on the um, the standards committee. With Professional the... standards. Yes. Okay. So talk about that a little bit. So before I even got into real estate, I really thought that I wanted to go to law school. Mm. And that's really where I, my focus was. I had mm-hmm. graduated college. I had a small performance career. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to go to law school. And then I really wanted to have a family too. And I mm-hmm. thought, do I really want to go back to school full time? And I was already married. Anyway, long story short... Someone that knew me thought I'd be a good fit for real estate. And mm-hmm. I think he knew me well because I think it has served me well. Mm-hmm. I'd say so. But yeah. I've, <laughs> I've been able to fill, fulfill that component of that yearning that I had to go to law school mm-hmm. through professional standards. So I became a mediator. I handle a lot of the um, hearings at the board, mm-hmm. um, you know, ethics complaints, arbitration complaints. And for me, it's been very educational as mm-hmm. well as, mm-hmm. you know, feeling like it's a give back to mm. my industry so just quickly so for you know the general public um quickly explain what that means so realtors are held to a certain code of ethics and should something come up where maybe they're not adhering to that then it comes up for review so the the actions of realtors are you know monitored and and Tell, talk about that so that I guess so, so people can understand the, the, the difference right. with that. So the important thing to start with is not not every real estate agent is a realtor. Okay. A realtor is held to a higher level of standards. We mm-hmm. abide by a code of ethics. Mm-hmm. Um, so if 
one realtor feels that another realtor or a member of the public feels that a realtor has maybe breached one of the articles of the code, mm -hmm. they can come forward and say, you know, I feel that um, realtor so-and-so has mm -hmm. not abided by the code of ethics on this. Mm -hmm. Or it, sometimes they, there's an argument over money. Who was the pre procuring cause bringing a buyer to a property? Mm -hmm. so, the, so we don't then go to a court of law. We at the Board of Realtors and all, all realtors mm -hmm. have a vehicle by which we can assist our membership in resolving the conflicts between them at the board level. So if you have a hearing panel, it's five people that hear your case and try to resolve it, you know, given the information they're given. Mm -hmm. Mediation, though, I think has, has proven to be the best vehicle so far because it enables the parties to really talk to each other, get the emotion out, mm -hmm. you really get to the root of what the problem is. When it's a hearing panel, it's really not a lot of crosstalk. Mm -hmm. It's the facts and only the facts, and then somebody else has the ability to make the decision, which is the hearing panel. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like it's a it's a wonderful process. I'm thrilled to be a part of it, and I've found it to be very educational as yeah. well as I just helpful. think that would be so interesting. Uh, we are just about out of time. I want to share your contact info. Um, so folks looking to buy or sell in the Central Mass area, Lee clearly knows her stuff. Um, her cell phone number is 508 eight four seven six zero one seven her email is lee at lee joseph one dot com that's the number one and the website is lee joseph one dot com um before we go though you mentioned your short performance career i'm gonna need to hear about <laughs> what you did and uh a couple of performances that you were in <laughs> like like fast <laughs> many, many moons ago and many pounds ago, I was a dancer. Many pounds ago. Okay. Yes, so yes. like you had two pounds left. <laughs> yeah, on I you. know. Okay. Whatever, Lee. No, so <laughs> you I, were a dancer. I, okay. I was, yes. Uh -huh. And now I, I, not so much in the performance arena anymore, except that I do love ballroom dance. So mm -hmm. that's when I get time to do anything mm -hmm. in the dance world. I like to do that. I've also given back to, um, in Worcester, the uh, performing arts quadrant of Burncoat High School, which mm -hmm. is where I graduated from. Mm -hmm. I'll often go back and support their performances. I've choreographed for them. Cool. Well, that's great. Like that. yeah. That's so awesome. I get a lot of enjoyment out of that, too. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. <laughs> thank um, you. Lee, thank you for joining us. Um, I really appreciate having you here. Sarah, thanks for your help. Um, we will be back right after this with more Get Real. Thank you both.